This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Did you know today that you are a champion, that you are a winner, and all we do is win, 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 and God has an incredible plan for your life. I'm Amy Schaefer. <laughs> I almost started singing. I'm with Tom Hollis, yeah. and we have an incredible program today. We do. You know, I <laughs> love my football. I love the Steelers. I love, I, I grew up in the 70s and grew up with all those Super Bowl wins. It was, it was a great time, Amy. It was a great time to be a, a fan, yeah. believe me. I mean, it couldn't be better. Right. I mean, I was spoiled, okay? <laughs> but uh, we have uh, Bill Stern, John Kolb, and Larry Brown are gonna be with us. That's, uh, there's eight Super Bowl rings in there, and uh, it, it's, but they're gonna be talking wow. about for men only, and about this event that's coming up. We're gonna be talking about men, that, we're gonna talk about their stories, but also about men and the, the challenges we face. And uh, listen, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a, a powerful time of understanding what God wants to do in the lives of men. Yeah, you know, and we are here on, in Holy Week and it's, you know, Monday, Thursday, and this is the time of a Passover meal that Jesus is going to have with his disciples. And what Jesus intentionally did was to raise up and develop and pour into disciples, men of God, women of God. And, you know, we know the scripture that in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your son sons and your daughters. So it is time right now for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. It's time for men to rise up. It's time for the women to rise up. It's time for the church to rise up. Yes. It's time for Cornerstone Television Network to rise up because it really is bottom line all about Jesus. Well, listen, we've got a life that we were called to. We've, we've all met Jesus. We've all had our lives transformed by him. We've all had our wrong ideas about God. We were talking about that yesterday, the wrong ideas about God that he has changed in us and he's, we see him as he is. Now, where does he launch us from that, okay? Because we're not saved just to be saved. We're saved to know him, but we're saved to tell others about him. And events, uh, Amy, events like this, yeah. they really matter because uh, let's face it, in our culture now, men are kind of emasculated a, a bit yes. and, and it, it yeah. kind of, uh, you know, kind of put down. And what we have here are strong men, not, not just strong physically, but strong in the spirit. That's what really matters. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and you're going to be strong. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, all of these Super Bowl rings in the room right now, maybe you don't feel like a champion today. Maybe you feel like everything you touch goes south. Maybe you, you're feeling like you're really struggling. Like, I don't feel like I'm victorious with anything. But can I say to you today, you're absolutely wrong. Just because you were born, just because you are you, Christ died for you. You are that valuable and that important and you are victorious in Christ. So today know deep in your heart, have it tattooed deep in your spirit that you are a champion in Christ because of what Jesus did. Absolutely, we are champions in him. Right now, let's uh, hear what's going on with Sydney and the Glory Hour. I got a panel of psychiatrists, all Christian, psychiatrists and psychologists to help me unpack this and to help understand what happened. And I was proud of the stories. And as I told the stories to this panel, they were just sad. And they said, Michael, this isn't fun. This isn't, this is nothing, you know, yeah, be proud of your survival. But this was complex childhood trauma at the highest level. So you need treatment. And I said, well, excuse me. I, Maybe I do, but I don't think I do. But I know that when I think about the 14, it's a spectrum of overachievers, which may be a part of an addiction in itself, right? I, I've worked, I've been very successful, and I'm very thankful to the Lord for everything that I, that I have. But part of that is trying to make sure I never run out of what I have, and I still, it's kind of a joke, but I still order the large pizza when I don't need the large pizza. It makes me feel better. Well, if you watch the show very much, you know I'm a huge sports fan. In fact, in the 70s, two things happened to me. I got saved and I started rooting for the Steelers. And, and both of those things have stayed with me that all, all this uh, that time. So, uh, you know, when it comes to rooting for the black and gold, 
I'm there every Sunday, and I absolutely love hearing people's personal stories of faith, too. And the only thing that can beat that is when you combine those two. So joining us now are four-time Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers, John Colvin, Larry Brown, along with Bill Stern from the Covenant Church of Pittsburgh and a founder of For Men Only. Gentlemen, Hello. welcome to Hope Today. Good morning. This is a power-packed group of guys over here, let me tell you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm excited to have you in. I'm a fanboy of it, actually. Uh, so let me ask you, Bill, about the, the event for Men Only. I mean, wh what led you to start this, and how'd you get, uh, you know, the Steelers involved? Well, you know, we started this back in the nine, early 90s. We hit our very first for Men Only. We had John Kolb. Tan Chilkin, yeah. and Rosie Greer. You might have remember uh, him. Uh, New York Giants, right? Yeah, yeah, Rosie Greer. And we had it actually at uh, Al Monzo's Palace Inn out in Monrovia where the UPMC East is now. Mm -hmm. They tore it down. But uh, we've had them every probably four years since then. And we got guys like Larry Brown and John. And uh, we have... This year, we have 20 Super Bowl rings represented. We just okay. added wow. J.T. Thomas. Yeah. He's a four-time. Donnie Shell, John Stallworth. Yeah, can we put that graphic up? We have a graphic of the For Men Only. There it is. I mean, you got a lot of, a lot of guys on there. A lot that. of guys coming. <laughs> yeah. A lot of guys. Plus, we've got, I'm excited about uh, Harrison Hayes. He plays for Liberty University. Okay. And he's going to be a starter. He's only going to be a, a junior. He's from Pine Richland area. Okay. Offensive uh, tackle. Great man of God, a young kid. I've heard him minister to kids, and it's he's beautiful spirit, you know? Yeah. Great right. guy. And plus, well, it's twofold for men, for men only. The first one is evangelism. Yeah. Get guys right with God. That's the main thing. The second one for this for men only is we're going to have a tribute to Tanchiokin. Okay. Uh, what, a, what a disciple maker he's been through the years. You know, it was so great to get to know Tunch a little bit. He come right up to me, he, uh, you know, and like, he's like, tell me what, what's the latest mission trip you've been on? You know, he's just like so interested in what I was doing. And here I'm like, hey, you're a stealer. I'm supposed to be interested in you, but yeah. uh, I love that. So uh, I just want to uh, ask you, John, uh, tell me uh, just a little bit about your story. How did you come to faith in Christ? Wow. Um, yeah, uh, there was a guy that played actually for the Cleveland Browns. His name was Bill Glass. And I read a book, I was in the ninth grade, and I read a book by Bill Glass. And in the book he talks about, he grew up in Texas, and so people don't understand in Texas and Oklahoma, if you don't become a football player by the time you're in the ninth grade, your parents will put you up for adoption exactly. and find a kid that can play. Amy's from Oklahoma, yes. by the way. Yeah, oh, yeah. Am I right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So uh, I was a ninth grader, and I did not get a football uniform that year. They had one that had 89 on the front and 98 on the back. I would have wore that one, but I didn't even get that one. And, uh, and so I was reading this Bill Glass book, and he prayed that in the book he talks about, he prayed that if the Lord would make him an All-American, he would become a minister. Wow. I said, that's a decent trade. So I prayed, and I started growing. <laughs> I actually grew 30 pounds a year, you know, and uh, for the next, so I went from 120 to 210, ninth grade, to two, and, uh, and I got the football scholarship. And then I began to think, oh my gosh, God kept his part of the deal. What's my part? And I remember at church, all the pastors, now this, I shouldn't say this, not political, but they had these big wives and I was going, I don't want to do, I mean, you know, this doesn't look like it's fun. Uh -oh. and, uh, and so I was really struggling. And, and this went on and we played we played uh, in Miami Dolphins, and, and, uh, and the speaker talked about what really being a Christian was. And I really don't know if I had not heard or had not stopped to think about what the gospel message is. It's not what I 
do, but what has been done for me and who I am following, yeah. and it's a following thing. And uh, so I'm, Larry and I are linemen, so it takes us a while to figure that out. <laughs> and, but once that happened, the light switched on. Yeah, that's great. Offensive linemen, come on, they're the smartest guys on the field, aren't they? I mean, they <laughs> got to work together and everything, and uh, yeah. Tom, my son is 16 years old, John, so I've got to let him hear how you prayed to gain weight. He's wanting to bulk so bad. He uh, thinks he's going to be a famous soccer player right now. But um, how do you keep your faith fresh and alive, you know, decades later? Okay, I guess the first thing I wasn't, how do we, how do we introduce Christ and Maybe I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I know we sometimes say, I hear it all the time, with every head bowed and every eye closed, slip up your hand. Yeah. Okay, now you're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a lot of Christians running around with our head bowed and our eyes closed. Mm -hmm. We need to open our eyes and get our heads up and start following and leading. And so... Uh, when I, when I open my eyes, and in First Corinthians, yeah, it talks about, and also in, uh, there's two places in the Bible, where, where Paul writes, we've, everybody has been given a gift. And do and, um, you know what your gift is? I mean, obviously you do. You're, you're using your gift for this TV thing. But I, I think one of the scariest things is, uh, we're standing before Jesus, and he said, what was the gift that I gave you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I just, with every head bowed, every, I, I slipped up my hand, and, and I knew I was going to heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I didn't figure out what, what God had put me here for. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when we pray about that, he'll start to reveal that. And, and I don't, you know, I, I don't, I know... God's an Oklahoma State Cowboy fan. Ooh. Boomer Sooners. Uh -oh. he's, he's really not. No, that's a, she's from the other part of Oklahoma. Right? Oh. <laughs> I had to put that in. Yeah. But, um, but he has, you know, we work, we have a nonprofit, and we work with a lot of veterans that have come back. I mean, I'm talking about people with bullet holes in their head and stuff still. Uh, and sometimes I think, we talk about, did God save you from something or for something in that combat? Yeah. And I don't think we have to have a bullet hole in our head to ask that question. Yeah. What did God save me for? You know? yeah. And so when I go up in front of that church or I slip my hand up, he's saving me not just from hell, but he's saving me for something here. Now and, figure and out now, what that is. I have to tell you, you said, well, obviously we're using our gifts. I would have not, the teenage Tom Hollis would not have thought he would have been sitting in this seat doing this kind of thing, but God matures us, he grows us, he opens up doors for us, it's, a, it's amazing. Uh, I do want to say Larry had some uh, dental work, so we're having him here because we honor him. <laughs> he does, he's not going to be talking today in case you're wondering, but just let me ask you, Bill, what you see men need right now in this world and again, why you're doing the event. Well, I think be sports in general, mm -hmm. I think lays a foundation for a lot of men, discipline, responsibility, teamwork, and that sort of thing. I, that's why I like sports so much, you know, because it leads men to gather together, be yeah. on a team, team effort. And I, I, I always remember this way back in the 90s when Promise Keepers was alive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they have a statistic that if you reach the man 97% of the time, you reach the whole family. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's our goal. That's yeah. our goal, to reach the man with, with Christ and to put him on the right track. Not only, not only have, like John says, hit raise your hand, but disciple them after. Mm -hmm. Get them in disciple groups. We have, we have across Pittsburgh area, a locking arms man different groups uh, that the site. You five o'clock in the morning prayer time, don't you? Yeah, we do. And you get people to come out. And we, we get 30 <laughs> guys to come out. You know that's God. That ain't me. <laughs> wow. I, I, 
what I like about Bill now, because he's, of course, a friend of Cornerstone and he's been here for years. But if, if you ever wonder what a Northeast Pittsburgh guy sounds like, <laughs> it's Bill. He just sounds like a yinzer. I mean, like we bleed black and yellow. It's like that's who we are. Um, what are you most excited about the men's event coming up? Like what, what is making your heart pound for this particular timing, this particular event? Well, I always look for the harvest of men, you know? I want men to come. We got, we have uh, different colleges and high schools bringing players to this event. Geneva, Gino DeMarco just told me that there are two busloads of, uh, of wow. young oh, men. Yeah. Nice. And, and what, what really makes me uh, happy to see is that guys pressing into God mm -hmm. and start, put away their old, old self and start anew start afresh you know it's it's you know tom you got to give me time for john to tell a story about larry since larry oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, all yeah. right huh? <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. Listen, to, listen to this all right go okay. ahead john the floor is yours well it's scriptural <laughs> <laughs> it's scriptural one of my favorite you know i love bible verses like jeremiah 29 uh was it? no no not uh, 12 I'll get, I won't, an offensive lineman, we only go on snap count of one or two, so I'm, I'm too high. But it says, if you've run with men and they wore you out, how do you expect to outrun horses? Uh -huh. And if you fall down in a time of peace, how will you stand up in the middle of the lions? Man, that's a, that's a go get them. That's a sick em Bible verse. And there's another one, and, and it's in the Old Testament, and it talks about where David is being wronged, and he says, uh, he says, Lord, take the battle axe after him. So Larry is a battle axe guy. So, <laughs> so, so, we, so this is scriptural, so you gotta understand. Yeah, so we're playing the, the, we're playing the Philadelphia Eagles and uh, they got this guy that, he scares everybody in the league. He's got these slitty eyes and, and he just, 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 like Ernie Holmes scared everybody, you know, cause he could stare you and Claude Humphrey could do the same thing. And at that time, the head slap was legal, but you really, it wasn't a thing, you know, it, it's not a good thing to do. And so Claude kept head slapping Larry, and, and, and Larry, Larry, he goes, Claude, would you please stop head slapping me? <laughs> <laughs> so what's that going to do? That's just going to invite, you know. Yeah. And so he did it the next play. And, and Larry goes, Claude, please, would you stop head slapping me? <laughs> and so then the third time it happened, Larry goes, now, Claude, I've asked you three times. Yeah. So the fourth time, Ooh. Larry got him, and he got him, he's holding him up. He takes the battle axe. And he's got him up in the air. And Claude's going, kuh, 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 kuh. can't breathe. And, and, and this official, everybody knew him, Tommy Bell. And he's going, Mr. Brown, would you put him down? <laughs> 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 and Larry's, kuh, I told you not to hit. He's got the battle axe going. <laughs> Mr. Brown, please put him down. <laughs> I mean, he did warn him. Larry, you warned him a couple of times. He warned him, he warned him three times. He asked for it. He, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I, you know what? There's a time that you bring the battle axe out that, you know, and when it's causing, going to hurt the team or going to hurt your, yeah. <laughs> I love that story. Amy, let, let me ask you to ask them yeah. about, what a, a wife and a mother and a, a, a woman, mm -hmm. what she is so happy about when the man gets himself right with God. Oh, I mean, all women, they want a strong, powerful man of God that will lift a guy up off the field with his bare hand, you know, and, and like, we're going to serve the Lord in our house. As for me and my house, we're going to like lead the family, not only on the field, but spiritually speaking. So I just think, you know, what would you say to the women out there that are like, 
oh no, like, I don't know, I need to spend time with him, just stay home with me or just be with the kids. What is the vision for that woman out there that's like, he needs to be in the room? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I think all, all men are called to lead, okay? Along with that leading, you've got to be a servant, serve the Lord, and you've got to be protection for your family. You've got to protect your family from all evil, anything that comes by. So if you're looking, if a woman's out there looking for a man, first, she's got to make sure he's serving the Lord. Because yeah. if he's not serving the Lord, he's serving himself. So I know that's, that's hard to take, yeah. but, but you got to serve your family. you got to serve God first, then family, and then whatever happens after that, your church, your job, whatever. But that's the order that God has placed in us as men. Yeah. You know, a covering, a covering over our family. Yeah. yeah. You know, so important. Mm -hmm. and, and really, it, 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 it it attracts a woman because yeah. she can do, she has freedom in that because yeah. she knows a man got That's her right. back. Well, yeah. John is chomping at the yeah. bit to respond, yeah. I, I can think, tell. You know, Bill's, <laughs> Bill's events called for men only. And at first glance you'd say, well, why men? Why not? Well, there's several places. Hebrews 12 is one of my favorite. And it uses the word discipline, I think, seven times, and I'm holding up eight fingers, but this one doesn't count. Um, <laughs> it uses the word discipline like seven or eight times. And it says, and it, and it relates a man and a father, a father and, a, and God. And it says, so what man is there who doesn't discipline his son? So God has given us fathers to discipline us, not moms, but fathers. Yeah, early on, you know, mom tells you to make sure you go straight to school and look both ways when you cross the street. But when you get older, it becomes the man's job to discipline his son. And, and he relates that discipline, how God disciplines us as men, and then how we then in turn discipline our sons. And I don't think in today, that's, that's a man's job. I don't think and I remember growing up when my dad he didn't when he looked I, you know my mom would she had several octaves she would go up and it really usually wasn't until I'm telling your dad that I yeah but yeah. but I think no, that I know, is yeah I understand that completely uh, you know yeah. my dad was a great and loving Christian man but I didn't want to cross him I didn't want to yeah. you know but I, where is I, so where is the young man going to learn that from yeah. The discipline. Yes. That, uh, yeah. Well, let me uh, let me ask you guys, and and uh, John, maybe you can speak into the camera there uh, for someone who doesn't know the Lord, okay? And and what would you tell them right now? They're watching. Maybe they saw that Steelers are on. What would you say to that person who doesn't know the Lord? Yeah, um, this is really right now. There's I have a I have a friend. Um, he's a Vietnam vet. Uh, He's a black man. He was, there was a lot of things that went on with him in Vietnam where he was asked to do things that the white guys didn't have to do. And Larry, I don't even think I've had a chance to tell you, but as a result, there were some Muslim guys around him and they brought him to, um, to Islam. And uh, he's come in. And he's going to be at our thing because he is a Donnie Shell fan. Oh. So pray for him, man. Pray, yeah. you know. And, uh, but uh, he just found out he has uh, uh, some kidney failure, and uh, and 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 I, and I keep and I keep trying to talk about Jesus and Jesus. Not that you're guaranteed healing, but what? So you asked me the question: What? What? would you, what would you, I, I look at the difference between what he's going through with Allah and Muhammad and, and, and what I see as the emptiness there and what Jesus provides yes. with that, 
you know, Psalm 139, he encloses me behind and before and lays his hand upon me. And so that uh, how many, I think, I don't know, I didn't count them, because again, we count three and that's pretty much it. But I think the most often used term in the Bible is fear not. And, and many of us have things that we're afraid of. And who do we, who do we give it who do we give it to? I love in, in Job, where Job is, uh, God is asking to Job, you know, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? And then he keeps relating it, and he relates it to a horse in battle. Man, I'm, I'm a guy. I, in Sunday school, you know, I thought we sing Kumbaya and, and did little, made little flower baskets, but he's talking about a horse in battle, and he says, fear not. Yeah. Fear not. And well, that, that's the thing, is we need to know that God has called men to be men yeah. in this situation. Yeah. And, and I, I just want to, we've just got about a, a minute left. Uh, Bill, tell us real quick again, where is the, the uh, event and, and how do people get involved? The event happens at Covenant Church of Pittsburgh. And um, for men only. For men only. And we have uh, Steelers coming from the 70s. We have... Uh, a young, a young guy from Liberty University speaking also. Kent Chevalier, the Steeler chaplain. Yeah, we've had him here. Is and that's Saturday, April 27th. 27th. What time does it start? Starts at 10 a.m. There's a okay. tailgate after. Okay. All right. And, uh, Are we God. excited about Russell Wilson? That's what yes. we really wanted. <laughs> John, Larry, thumbs up. Thumbs up that you'll be watching the games. Yeah, for There's sure. a couple of things we love around here. God, country, and football. <laughs> and so <laughs> the fact is, though, we as the church, we've got to get off of the benches and we've got to get into the game. We've got to get on the field. We've got to act out our faith. We've got to walk out our faith. We've got to tackle and we've got to gain yards in life. And guess what? We can because of the victory that we have in Amen. Jesus. So we're praying for you to have the victory today. Let it never be said that you are not one of the greatest champions that has ever mm. been born. We'll see you tomorrow on Hope Today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, giving God all the praise and glory He deserves. Join the Hope Today team and prepare your hearts this Good Friday for a powerful time of prayer and worship that will uplift and inspire you to experience God's presence. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.